Ryan Cook from Moody Theological Seminary addresses the method of biblical theology in a detailed discussion that delves into the nuanced and multifaceted nature of the discipline. Through an analogy using a dialogue from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, Cook suggests that the meaning of language, particularly biblical language, can be fluid and subject to different interpretations, a concept directly relevant to the dynamic field of biblical theology. Biblical theology is characterized by its diverse definitions and practices, given its role as a bridge discipline. It intertwines various academic domains, which can pull it in numerous directions as scholars aim to understand the theological intent and historical context of biblical texts. Cook references Edward Clink and Darian Lockett, who, in their book Understanding Biblical Theology, outline a nexus of issues pivotal to the discipline, issues that biblical theologians must address as they develop their methods and frameworks. These issues include the contentious debate on the relationship between the Old and New Testaments, whether this connection is inherently divine and organic as a product of a single divine authorship, or whether it is an artificial construct that lacks inherent cohesiveness. Another crucial subject in the field is the balance between acknowledging the notable theological diversity within biblical texts versus identifying overarching theological unity. This debate is exemplified by contrasting portrayals of foreign nations across Old Testament books such as Obadiah, Amos, and Jonah, which express differing perspectives on God's judgment and mercy. The challenge for biblical theologians is to determine whether to emphasize these divergences or to seek a unified understanding. Scope and sources are also debated among biblical theologians. The intended audience of the biblical message and whether the focus should be on ancient, subsequent, or contemporary readers, shapes interpretations significantly. Also, Cook touches on the role of non-canonical texts in biblical theology, questioning their status and influence relative to canonical scriptures. Moreover, Cook brings up the subject matter of biblical theology. Is it about God's nature and deeds, or about the beliefs of the people in biblical times? The discipline might aim just to describe historical beliefs or to accentuate normative truths that must be embraced by believers universally. The intended beneficiaries of biblical theology, either the church or the academic community, are another focal point of Cook's lecture. This consideration impacts how biblical theology is practiced and the kind of methodologies and goals that are pursued within the field. Clink and Lockett categorize five methods of biblical theology though Cook elaborates on four. In historical description, as exemplified by James Barr, the Bible is approached as a document reflecting human thoughts, and the unique theological message of each book is affirmed without an overarching narrative. This method is rich in its focus on textual and cultural context, yet it is primarily of academic interest and does not presuppose a divine coherence within the scriptures. The redemptive history approach, associated with figures such as D.A. Carson, reasons that there is an inherent connection between Old and New Testaments anchored in God's redemptive plan, with typology as a key unifying framework. This view allows for diversity in theological expression, but ultimately seeks to trace a unified redemptive story leading to Jesus Christ. Brevard Childs is mentioned in connection with the canonical approach, which is an attempt to reconcile historically critical perspectives with a theological reverence for the canon as an authoritative collection. Childs focuses on the discrete voices within the biblical canon, asserting diversity yet highlighting unity based on the Bible's inclusion within one canon. The theological construction model considers the Bible as a theologico-ecclesial document, where the Old Testament is understood in light of and matures through the New Testament. It tends to elevate the New Testament's interpretive precedence and focuses on understanding Scripture through the lens of Christian doctrine and tradition such as church creeds and the writings of the early church fathers. In sum, Cook situates biblical theology as an intermediary discipline that builds on exegesis, the meticulous analysis of biblical passages to understand the original author's intent, and expands to explore how these texts communicate theological ideas about God, humanity, and the world. While biblical theology values the diversity of scriptural perspectives, it also strives for synthesis and contemporary resonance, wrestling with how ancient scriptures speak to modern audiences. Last but not least, 
Cook's discussion offers an in-depth examination of the complex and nuanced field of theological studies within Christianity. He begins by distinguishing historical theology from other theological methods, noting that historical theology involves the study of how the Church has historically grappled with various theological topics. This discipline contrasts with exegesis and biblical theology which are deemed normative pursuits aimed at interpreting the Bible's inherent message. Historical theology, on the other hand, reveals how biblical interpretations and applications have evolved across different cultural and historical contexts. Cook suggests that studying this discipline yields considerable wisdom, but also necessitates caution, as not all historical interpretations or practices are exemplary or constructive. Shifting the focus to dogmatic theology, Cook explains that this sphere is related to the specific beliefs and declarations, confessions, of faith communities. These doctrinal formulations are deeply rooted in the identity of a church, like the Westminster Confession for Reformed Churches. Cook posits that even in a non-denominational educational context, certain doctrinal commitments, such as dispensationalism, can serve as the institution's form of dogmatic theology, crystallizing the community's convictions. Discussing philosophical theology, Cook notes that the Church is not the only institution that addresses the profound questions surrounding existence and the meaning of life. General revelation and philosophical traditions offer insights that can supplement theological understanding. Scholars like Alvin Plantinga have made significant contributions to the Church by engaging with philosophical systems and enriching theological discourse. Cook himself acknowledges the value of philosophical works, such as those of Aristotle, which he incorporated into his dissertation to enrich his interpretation of the Psalms. Cook then turns to practical theology, indicating its formation within the context of active ministry. This discipline involves applying biblical texts and insights to real-life situations across diverse cultural backgrounds, leading to the evolution of theology directly related to pastoral and mission work. Such engagement not only confronts theological ideas with practice, but can also generate fresh insights which in turn may influence biblical and systematic theology. In an effort to integrate these various approaches, Cook describes systematic theology as the discipline that attempts to synthesize all insights from other theological fields to address the contemporary understanding of God, humanity, and the cosmos. This synthesis requires ongoing rearticulation in response to changes within the cultural and societal context. However, Cook argues that theological work is not as clear-cut and sequential as it is often depicted. Instead of a progressive movement from exegesis to biblical and systematic theology, the process is intertwined with the theologian's presuppositions informed by dogmatic, historical, or systemic theology. As such, these presuppositions influence the interpretation of Scripture. Cook maintains the importance of being aware and honest about these preconceived notions while engaging in biblical theology, as they can both challenge and be challenged by systematic theology and its long-standing traditions of biblical interpretation. Regarding Cook's approach to Old Testament biblical theology, he points out the necessity of a multifaceted strategy that respects both the literary form and the message of the text. Biblical theology should be firmly grounded in exegetical study, encouraging an in-depth examination of every passage and recognizing the distinctive contribution of each biblical book. This approach requires theologians to appreciate the variety of theological perspectives within Scripture, while engaging these insights in a broader canonical dialogue, both within the Old Testament itself and in conversation with the New Testament, to weave a cohesive and comprehensive theological narrative. Cook acknowledges the diverse methodologies within the field by citing contemporary scholars with varying approaches to Old Testament theology. Walter Moberly may focus on exegeting single texts, while Paul Howes might explore complete books successively. John Goldingay reiterates the diverse voices found within the Old Testament. Walter Kaiser organizes his exegesis around a central thematic lens, and Brevard Childs follows a canonical approach. Ian Pravan, meanwhile, situates his readings against the cultural backdrop of the ancient Near East to repeat the unique message of the Old Testament. In essence, Cook's exploration illuminates the rich tapestry of theological disciplines, stressing their interconnectedness and the dynamic interplay between them. He advocates a conscientious and well-informed theological practice 
that balances the recognition of tradition with the quest for fresh understanding, challenging future scholars to pave their path in Old Testament biblical theology. In conclusion, Cook probes the intricate domain of biblical theology, underlining its fluidity and complexity as a discipline charged with the mission of bridging diverse academic studies. Biblical theology, as Cook presents it, enmeshes itself with the examination of the theological meaning and historical milieus of scriptural texts, grappling with varied scholarly interpretations akin to Alice's conversation in Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass, where meaning is dynamic and malleable. Furthermore, Cook navigates through the core challenges that biblical theologians encounter, drawing on insights by Edward Clink and Darian Lockett. He underscores the contested interplay between the Old and New Testaments, pondering if their relationship is a harmonious divine creation or a constructed collage lacking intrinsic unity. Another focal debate rests on how to account for the Bible's theological spectrum. Should scholars prioritize the diverse voices and discrepancies within the scriptures, or seek an overarching unitary theme? In addition, determining the audience of biblical messages, contextualizing it for past, present, or future generations, influences interpretive outcomes. Similarly, the significance and weight assigned to non-canonical texts impact theological conversations. The intent of biblical theology oscillates between merely chronicling historical beliefs and affirming normative theological truths. Further, Cook discusses various biblical theology approaches. The historical description method treats the Bible as a historical document, analyzing the distinct theological message of each book without inferring an overall narrative. D.A. Carson's redemptive history perspective unites the Old and New Testament through a continuous redemptive storyline culminating in Christ. The canonical approach, associated with Brevard Childs, upholds the Bible's authoritative sanctity while attending to its manifold voices. Lastly, the theological construction model filters the Old Testament through the New Testament, integrating Christian doctrines and traditions. Besides, Cook calls for a biblical theology that begins with precise exegetical work and comprehensively contemplates Scripture's heterogeneity, aiming to harmonize and contemporize theological insights. He also addresses the broader landscape of theological studies, encompassing historical, dogmatic, philosophical, practical, and systematic theology, each contributing distinct perspectives that shape a theologian's understanding and approach to Scripture. Additionally, Cook emphasizes that Old Testament biblical theology demands a nuanced strategy, deeply rooted in exegesis and respectful of both the literary form and substance of biblical texts. It's a field abundant in methodologies, as different scholars accentuate various aspects. Cook champions a theology that recognizes the significance of tradition, whilst endeavoring for novel interpretations challenging the next wave of theologians to innovate in their scholarly journey through the Old Testament.